you're going to be part of his class, so. Right, I am getting rated for this. Oh, I'm not that. If I say, say anything off base, uh, I'm sure I'll hear about it later. But, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Pastor Rob, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the uh, passage I'll be preaching from this morning is Luke chapter 17 and verses 11 through 19. So that's Luke chapter 17 and verses 11 through 19. Beginning with verse 11. And notice as we read this passage, or in the reading of this passage, the partial versus complete healing uh, that uh, we see here. Uh, starting with verse 11, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Okay. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a popular Christian praise song called The Heart of Worship. And you might recall singing these lyrics. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. This song, in a way, reflects the image of the healed Samaritan in this passage. As humans, when we do something nice for someone, we don't expect the recipient to respond in worship, at least probably not. But generally speaking, we do expect a thank you, right? And even more meaningful, and you might say relational, is when the thank you is expressed in a more creative, profound way, such as in thank you cards, thank you notes. Just recently, I had the privilege of attending a pastor appreciation luncheon at an area Christian school. And one of the things about this event, other than the fact that they provided free food, was that the event gave the, 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 the teachers, the staff, and the students the chance to connect with pastors in the community, and also vice versa, gave the opportunity for pastors to meet and get to know people at the school. <coughs> and the pastors were invited to speak at their chapel. And in a thank you card, uh, there was a thank you card designed by the kids, and I want to share this with you. Uh, you can see the joy and the creativity come through in this thank you note, and God's sense of humor as well. And uh, this kind of note was given to all the pastors in attendance. It says, God has called you to do this and you have obeyed. God bless you, thank you. Because of you and other pastors, I will easily go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was pretty nice. And you know, one of the unique characteristics of this effort by the community to say thank you to the pastors was that it opened the door for people to come together in fellowship and in community and allowed for the building of relationships. And you can see this kind of picture, this is why I bring this up, you can see this kind of picture begin to emerge in this text about the healed Samaritan in relation to Christ. You know, you hear uh, words expressing gratitude, uh, words saying thank you, and, and we love to hear those words, but Jesus was no different. He also liked and expected to hear those very same words from the lepers that he sent to be cleansed. And the gift that Jesus gave was not anything small either, as we see in this narrative. The Lord Jesus gave more than just physical healing. He provided restoration into a community. He provided social healing. The, the lepers, they were not able to 
get near people or the crowds because of their condition. But Jesus set them free and restored them into the community. But most importantly, Jesus restored them into a relationship with him or offered that to them. When we send a thank you card to someone for a gift, not only is that expressing gratitude, but the person we're thanking in turn feels respected, valued, and honored. And that kind of reciprocity is important to us in today's society, but it was especially so in the world of the New Testament where people did everything possible to achieve honor and also, uh, and, and to achieve honor and also giving honor to whom honor was due. And so you can imagine how Jesus felt in that context when not one, not two, not four or five, but nine men did not bother to come back and praise the Lord and say thank you. So in terms of the theme of this passage, we see that the lepers, yes, they called out to God. Yes, they were cleansed by God. But only one came back to give thanks and praise. And this shows that merely receiving the healing is not the full benefit of what Jesus has to offer. So this passage, yes, it's about gratitude, but I want to suggest to you that there's something more going on in this passage. I want to suggest to you that it's really about the heart of worship, the heart of worship in Jesus' presence, the heart of worship signifying something more than mere gratitude, and being in Jesus' presence signifying that the opportunity that the Samaritan had to uh, connect with Jesus, that he, he, that he embraced that opportunity to connect with Jesus in a personal way. So you'll find as we go through this account of the men with leprosy that the one who did come back did more than merely say thank you. So let's go through this text and see what Jesus has to say to us this morning and reveal to us. It says, it starts out by saying, Jesus traveled between the border of Samaria and Galilee. This is as he was traveling to Jerusalem. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And many crucial events would take place there, as we read in the larger account of the Gospel of Luke. But at this point, he is close to Samaria. And one of the men who had leprosy was from Samaria. And the Jews tried to avoid this place like the plague because they didn't want to associate with Samaritans. But not so with Jesus. He did not show favoritism. His love extended to all. And we start out, uh, this passage starts out by saying, um, it makes clear that they called out to God. These men called out to God. Verse 12 and 13, as Jesus was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. At a distance, they called out to Jesus. Another translation says they stood at a distance. Have pity on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. So we see in this text that they, they called out with humility. They addressed Jesus as master, as Lord. They called out with faith. Otherwise, they would not have called out at all. We also see that they called out in desperation. They acknowledged that they could not be set free of their condition on their own. They needed Jesus. They needed the ultimate cure giver. And at times, we may find ourselves in the same desperate state, needing healing. And it may not be physical healing. It could be something emotional, uh, mental, spiritual, and may even have to do with a relationship. But in any case, the first step in this healing process toward that closeness with Jesus, that the first step is to call out to God. The tendency may be to deal with issues on our own and, and not spend time with God allowing him into the situation. Uh, the lepers, initially at least, they allowed <coughs> Jesus into their lives. They allowed Jesus into the situation. And thinking just how many marriages, broken marriages and relationships uh, would be healed if, if only Jesus was allowed in that, those situations. Or if one is dealing with an addiction that they so want to break, the inclination may be to turn to self-help measures. But the encouragement is, first call out to God as did the lepers in that same desperate state. You know, when we get sick, we often call the doctor. Uh, you may know of someone who does everything possible to avoid going to or calling the doctor, and uh, I tend to be that way sometimes. Uh, when it comes to spiritual matters, though, 
Jesus is the one we go to for the ultimate healing and the help, but he also provides the faith community, the community of believers, to go uh, for prayer and support. So the question comes down to, are we going to the faith community for support and prayer when we need? And not just for the healing, but for the sake of our relationship with Jesus. So next in this passage, we find that these ten men put themselves in a position to receive cleansing from God. They called out to God, and now they put themselves in a position to receive the cleansing. But they had a part to play in this. They had to take that first step. They had to do their part. They had to go. Verse 14 says, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, what would happen if they did not take those steps? What would happen if someone who needs help does not go to the community of faith, those who pray and intercede? What would happen if those do, who need the healing do not go to the Lord in prayer? What would happen if the person who wants work does not fill out any applications or go to any potential employers? See, the Lord expects us to do our parts when we want uh, things like healing and deliverance. Verse 14 says, as they went, they were cleansed. You know, for a long time I sought healing and deliverance from a particular issue in my life, but it was not until I removed the source of the problem when I received that full healing. I had to follow those instructions given by the Lord, specifically for me to remove that problem, the source of the issue. God honors free will. And as we see in this passage, he honored the free will of the lepers. Uh, they could have chosen not to go, but he honored their free will. He also honored their free will in, in terms of whether or not they would come back to him in praise and worship and in gratitude. See, the Lord wants our worship to be from the heart and not forced. So it was through the leper's obedience and the following of Jesus' instructions that they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Showing oneself to the priest goes back to a practice in Leviticus uh, chapter 14. If the leper thought he was cleansed, he had to go to the priest who would de declare him clean. And the priest would represent God to the people and the people to God. And it would be marked to, he would be marked by holiness. Now Jesus would be the ultimate high priest. Jesus is the ultimate high priest and, and marked by perfection. And so we have a glimpse of Jesus' character in this passage. Uh, he is the one who showed humility here. He could have said, uh, I, you don't need to go to a priest. I'm the one that will declare you clean and heal you. What about when Jesus asked, uh, where are the other nine? Uh, we're not all ten cleansed. Nine lepers came back to Jesus. Or nine lepers decided <coughs> rather not to come back to Jesus. And yet the, God's grace was still there. His grace was still evident. But the difference between the one leper and the other nine had to do with the level of intimacy, closeness to Jesus. And that's really the point of what uh, this passage is saying to us this morning. The other nine were distant. They did not care to come back and give thanks. Yet they were still healed. But the one who did come back was healed. And not only was healed, but experienced that personal relationship and connection with the Lord Jesus. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. And verse 16 says he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. So we see here it's more than just gratitude. He wanted to be in Jesus' presence, worshiping him. See, God wants to restore us spiritually to him, not just answer these prayers of healing and deliverance or in the, in these other prayers. And there's nothing wrong with praying for things, but God, his, his main objective, he wants to be, <coughs> to be in restored relationship with him. How often this uh, kind of thing happens in relationships, uh, where one person tries to love the other, but uh, the other person doesn't respond. When a man loves a woman, so the song goes, uh, tries to express his love by giving gifts and doing nice things for her, but she doesn't reciprocate. Or the, it could be the other way around, vice versa. Uh, how do you get into a relationship like that? 
It just it just won't work. She may accept the gift, uh, but unless or he may <coughs> accept the gift, but unless there's some measure of responsiveness, the potential relationship probably won't go anywhere. And it happens between parents and children, too. Uh, one tries to reach out to the other, but uh, the relationship is one-sided. There's, there's no closeness, no intimacy. Jesus does not just want to heal. He wants to be in a personal relationship with us. And our prayer life should reflect this two-way relationship. Think of the many blessings we have been given by God. We, we had several blessings uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, and we need to uh, make note of those blessings, come back to him, spending time in praise and worship, uh, sitting at his feet, uh, singing praises, worshiping, and, and praying prayers of gratitude. These are the kinds of things that Jesus wants for us but will not force on us. Gratitude in this passage uh, gratitude coupled with that reverent attitude of worship is key to closeness to Jesus. And also in the cl this closeness, this close relationship with the Lord, we're encouraged, of course, to bring our burdens before him. You know, the Lord, uh, Lord understands that life is not always going to be easy. And the psalmist, uh, they reflect this very thing. They, they express many negative emotions to God. They, they go through all kinds of trials, and yet in the same Psalms we see them praise and give God thanks. So, and that, that is it, what's evident there in the Psalms is their relationship with the Lord. The men here in this passage in Luke who were healed not only obeyed Jesus' instructions, they responded in faith. Jesus healed them on the way. And so it takes faith to trust God, to follow his instructions, even before we see the results. The ten lepers, they, they called out to God. They, they called out to Jesus. They were cleansed. But we find that one leper came back to praise God and give thanks. Upon coming back, this former leper expressed passionately his gratitude towards the Lord. Upon coming back, this former leper expressed the utmost humility throwing himself at Jesus' feet, which was the ultimate mark of worship, submission, reverence. Upon coming back, this former leper showed his gratitude in both words and posture of worship. And that leads us to the question, do we show this same passionate, sincere gratitude in praising the Lord? The text uh, notes that he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give God uh, the praise except this foreigner? Well, as a Samaritan, as a foreigner, this act of coming back to Jesus to show gratitude and worship him was an act of faith in of itself. As, again, Jews did not associate with Samaritans. This Samaritan, not caring how many Jews saw him, boldly and assertively chose to come back to say thank you to Jesus. So again, we see how the love of Christ extends to all, including this Samaritan, does not show favoritism. And that love of Christ and his, his grace that he's willing to pour out for us is what draws people into a relationship with him. Again, that is his goal. Jesus says in verse 19, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. These last three words, made you well. This is something that goes beyond <coughs> physical healing. This has to do with the man's very soul being restored into a right relationship with Jesus. And that there's a crucial question that comes from this verse, and, and those words, made you well, needs to be addressed. Are there areas that we need to pray about? This former leper humbles himself, and Jesus lifts him up and commends him for his faith. Now, did the other man have faith too? Sure, but this man's faith was made complete. His faith was full-fledged. In terms of God's presence and a personal relationship, this healed Samaritan enjoyed that full benefit the other man did not. 
in terms of spiritual hunger and thirst. This healed Samaritan had his hunger and thirst satisfied in Christ. The other men did not. In terms of spiritual healing, this healed Samaritan was healed in full. The other men were not. They could have been, but they were not. How Jesus expected these men to respond and give thanks and praise is not unlike what God expected of the Israelites when he delivered them from slavery and bondage in Egypt. And of course we know from, from that story that they, instead of thanking and praising God, they grumbled. I'm sure there were times of testing, but they had just seen the mighty miracles of God. In this passage in Luke, we're not told specifically what these men did or how they acted after Jesus healed them, other than the fact that they did not return to Jesus. But the context might give us a clue in verse 33, which says, Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. Now, we do know that the picture painted of this Samaritan in this passage is one who was healed. He came back to Jesus, but he did not go back into the world and live life as he pleased. He humbled himself and worshipped in Jesus' presence. And this is really reflective of his heart and attitude towards Jesus. It was from the heart. There is a message to us in relation to the gospel I want to share with you this morning. You know, the person with leprosy was unclean, or was considered unclean. But it's important to realize that we who sin, and we're all sinners apart from Christ and his righteousness, we are unclean before God. But however unclean we are, we have a priest. And that priest, that ultimate high priest is Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us, and is ready, or is ready, is ready to declare us clean. But we must come to him with all of our baggage, all of our uncleanness. We must call out to him to receive that cleansing from him. And then, life after receiving Christ and his forgiveness should be marked by worship. We love him because he first loved us. And as God told the Israelites, the Lord God says, said to them, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. God also said, remember the works of God. If we look in the Old Testament. So, when we go to the Lord and pray and confess our sins, it's not just for the sake of confession and receiving God's grace and forgiveness. That's all well and good, but that's a part of the process. A part of the process of, of returning, of going back to the giver of the gift going back to Jesus and giving thanks and praise and being in that personal relationship with him. Confession and receiving cleansing from sin is not the end, it's the means. We pray and confess our sins, yes. We receive cleansing from God, yes. It's all well and good, but it does not stop there. Now we come to the foot of the cross and praise and worship. And we live a life of praising God and focusing on the gospel. And that's the means whereby God offers us salvation and cleansing from sin. So I want to encourage you this week to take a close look at your life and see what gifts God has given you. And the encouragement is to take time this week and reflect on those very blessings and <clears throat> express gratitude for those things. Perhaps write them down in a journal, uh, almost like a thank you note of your own to God. Secondly, if you've called out to God and uh, he, he seems to be delaying his response, uh, I encourage you to keep calling out to him. As it says in Luke 18, 1, pray and not give up. And remember that the purpose of prayer and answered prayer is always the glory of God. So, in this passage, we're called uh, we're, we're told to call out to God. We're instructed to receive his cleansing and healing. But let's not forget to come back. Our lives are designed in such a way that we are meant to come back time and again to the foot of the cross with ongoing worship throughout all of our lives. 
See, the problem with the men with leprosy was that they received the gift, but they did not receive the relationship, those nine men. They did not receive the relationship with the Lord Jesus that he had to offer them. There was no personal connection after the healing. The gospel of Jesus Christ, that is God's greatest gift to us. But it's important to remember that Jesus is not just the giver of the gift. He is the gift. If someone is given a car as a gift, and you can drive away with it, but the car is not the giver. Jesus is both the giver and the gift, and he calls you to receive him. As God gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. The gospel is God's greatest gift, is meant to be embraced, meant to be lived out. And people receive and accept this gift of everlasting life but, that Jesus has to offer, but we're not meant to run away with it. We're meant to come back to the giver of the gift. Jesus wants that personal connection with us, a relationship, and a commitment from us to live for him. So this morning, just want to uh, offer that in, in, your, in your quiet time when you pray to the Lord. Um, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? That's the first question. And then the second is, do you need to have, do you need to commit your life to him in a personal way, uh, coming to him in his presence in that personal relationship. So these are questions to reflect on. And in closing, Jesus was inviting those he healed, who he healed, he invited those he healed of leprosy into that two-way personal relationship with him that was marked by his love and his care to them, but also the expectation was that they would come back to him in praise and worship. So think on that two-way relationship. Let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, we just come before you this morning thanking you for all the blessings that you've given us. We want to thank you for the gift of your son Jesus, for the gospel, for everlasting life. We express, Lord, that gratitude. We come to your throne of grace just expressing that gratitude and wanting that personal connection with you, Lord. And I pray that you would address any areas of our spiritual journey our walk with you, our relationship with you. Uh, I pray that you would, uh, if, there, if there are areas that need healing, I pray that we would experience that healing in full this morning. I pray that, uh, that you would help us to draw closer into your presence in praise and in worship and encourage us in the times of difficulty and testing. Lord, you say in the Psalms, you are our refuge and our strength. You're ever present in times of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of your Holy Spirit who is with us to uh, fill us in our time of need and to fill us always. And thank you for your promise that nothing can separate us from your love. So, Lord, uh, we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory this morning. In Jesus' name.